I'm making this video for my own peace of mind because for some reason I have a very strong feeling that somebody's gonna call me out on not cleaning. So I'm taking a video before and after. That is my jacket, that stuff was there. This is mine, I took that out, I took that out, I took that out. These four are mine. That stuff was already there, that was already there. Everything else is already out. I'm going to clean up and show videos, me cleaning up, just so there's no argument that I didn't clean up or I disrespected this space because I did not. Upon second thought, I've decided that perhaps I should actually film my entire process. So I have taken out a few felts of wood board and two pellons that were stored back there behind the lockers. Um, once I'm done, I'm going to hang up the pellons and the felts, otherwise they would go wet back into a container. Uh, and I don't want things to get moldy or gross for anyone else who works here. So I'm going to be hanging them up um, probably towards the back by the Hollanders. Um, and again, I've, I checked to make sure because there was one overbeaten abaca that said do not use, so I am not using it. So I'm using this drained abaca. I have these colored ones, um, which are, I believe all abaca, but I'm not totally sure. The black one for sure is because it is labeled as such. Uh, I am draining it because overbeaten abaca, abaca takes forever to drain. Um, as far as the floor goes, I'm going to sweep the water around as best I can. I don't plan on making too much of a mess. Um, then, I actually ended up having to take out this as well. Uh, I'm not gonna be draining that stuff into this sink because it gets clogged. I'm gonna use this one with the screen and make sure that I uh, brush it out after. As you can see, there's already fiber here. Uh, that is not my fault, but I will do my best to clean that up anyway. Um, the mold and decal I found were in this blue bin. That's where I will be returning them to. I'm gonna lay them flat because otherwise they warp. Yeah, so, uh, wait for this stuff to drain and I can cooch a few sheets and go from there. Hands down the worst college experience I've ever had. It was an entry level class. It wasn't supposed to be hard. Not, no, okay. It was supposed to be a challenge, which is why I took it because fiber art is, uh, or at least paper making. It's not something I've ever done before. But did not expect things to turn out the way they did. And literally all I wanted was an apology and uh, did not get one. Uh, I have very good feeling about how this is all gonna end up, which is me having to do a grade appeal. I found out recently I made honor roll again, which is awesome and also stupendously frustrating given the current situation. I'm gonna do my best to leave this studio even cleaner than I found it. It's about 7.05 at night. I couldn't make it in earlier because I had to stop by the ceramic studio, which is my major. And uh, yeah, gotta wait for the abaca to drip dry. I'm gonna pull about four to five sheets, we'll see. Um, cooch it. Then I'm gonna hand pull it up, put it over the piece. Once I get back to my room, I'm gonna take, um, I brought little to-go containers for some of the pulp. I'm gonna paint it back in my room because I have things there that I'm gonna use. Uh, I may put some flower seeds on the underside, so once I place this in a site-specific place, at least something nice will grow out of this shitty, shitty situation. But yeah, I'm here, I'm doing the work. I would have had this done last week, except the uh, combo to get the lock had been changed, which was a bummer, uh, and I had not been given a heads up. I'm really just doing this video as a way to explain that I did clean, I left everything the way I found it, other than hanging these up to dry. Um, yeah. It's gonna be a boring video. I just wanna record it for posterity's sake, because again, I really think there's gonna be some kind of statement that I didn't clean, just like there was a statement that I cheated on an assignment and that I didn't do work and that I didn't show up for classes, which are all laughably inaccurate, so. Yep, it's 
just a waiting game. I would like, for the record, though, as long as I'm here talking to you guys, I don't think Kathy is a bad person. I don't think she's a very good teacher, though. I know she has a lot of personal things going on, which is why I did not contact her over break. She made it very clear on our meeting, our moderated meeting on the 11th, that on the 12th, she was taking her daughter to a Make-A-Wish trip, uh, that they wouldn't be back until the 18th. Uh, at that point, not knowing where they had been, I decided to give a few days. I didn't know if there was going to be jet lag. And then I realized, oh, it's Christmas. I'm Jewish. I forget those things. Um, so I obviously wasn't going to contact her over Christmas. And then it was New Year's. And I figured the first time that I could conveniently email her without um, being a burden was once the semester started. So I did not contact her over break um, because I'm not an asshole. Uh, and then I tried to email her, did not get a response, emailed her at the exact same email address as long as well as Dr. Bowden, and uh, then got a response. And uh, never was made aware of the combination change on the lock until I had to ask for it last week. Yeah, again, I'm an honor roll student. I'm in four classes right now. Three of them are studio classes. Four of them are studio classes if you count this assignment, which I don't because I'm not spending a classroom amounts of time here. Um, not quite yet. Uh, but I am working. Uh, I had to make my wooden structure out of bark. <sighs> it's exhausting. I've, um, I seriously thought about dropping out of college yesterday. Partly because of this situation, not entirely. That's way too much uh, to put on her, but um, all I wanted was an apology and the fact that it's gone on this long is absurd and hurtful and shitty because I am a good student and I do work hard. What are you gonna do? I don't think she's a bad person. I think she's going through a lot of shit. Maybe I remind her of someone. I don't know. None of that's an excuse. I do, however, feel a moral obligation to file a formal grievance against her. Um, I know there are other students um, here that are unhappy with her. However, I don't know their situation and they don't know mine. I try not to talk to anyone about it because it's no one's business. It's between me, Kathy, and the, the faculty here. I've never had a teacher call me a liar. Uh, I've never had a teacher call me a liar when I pointed out that she called me a liar. And then she said she didn't call me a liar. I've never had a teacher accuse me of missing tons of class when I can I have timestamp photos of every class I'm in because I like to watch my growth. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot to um, to take in because I love all my professors here. I chose NIU because of the ceramics department. I've said it before, and I will go on the record saying it again. I, it's nothing short of an honor to be able to study under UM. I, I see Jim Kearns as a mentor and a friend. I've grown a lot as a student and as a person since attending NIU. However, this was not an encouraging experience. It was not a growing experience. I don't expect everyone who takes an intro ceramics class to be doing expert ceramic work. I expect everyone to try their best. And while I fully and readily admit that specifically on the day, November 12th, which was the day I walked out of class, that the work I presented was not my best work, I still made sure the assignment was done to the best of my ability.
I just don't want any other student to go through this. I don't like playing games. I'm here to get an education and nothing else. I am the first generation of women in my family to get a degree. I am now working on my second degree and I intend fully to go on and get my master's as well. I don't know how I'm gonna pay for any of that, but I'm gonna work my ass off and like most people from my generation, I will go into crippling debt in order to do so because it is my dream and it is what I deserve. And because I know I can make an impact on the world around me. My ultimate goal is to start a non-for-profit organization helping veterans through the art, something Kathy knew well of and why she introduced me to the artist Drew Cameron, who is a paper making artist and veteran himself, who makes paper out of old and disused army uniforms. I paid attention in her class. I showed up. For other than a few incidents, she treated me and all other students with respect and integrity. Which is why those few incidents were so jarring and so inappropriate. I want to be a good student because I know I can be. And because for all of my youth and in high school, uh, I was told I wasn't smart and I couldn't accomplish anything. And I'm here to prove people wrong because I am smart and I do work hard. And while I am still young at being an artist and I am still new to the experience, I do what I can. The thing that really frustrates me is the two pieces of work that I made last semester out of all of my classes that I was most proud of came out of Kathy's class. One of them she accused me of cheating on and said I used a paper cutting machine instead of a X-Acto knife and a stencil, which is what I did. I have the stencil. Um, I can show it. Um, the other one she still has in her possession, it's in my notebook, which I had requested in an email at the beginning of the semester that she either leave in the locker here or leave with my academic advisor. I have received no word from my academic advisor that she has it, and it's not in the locker. So uh, that's a bummer because I really wanted that back. I'm not happy with how the class end. However, I am proud of the work I put in. I am proud of what I accomplished. Which makes it even harder that this is going on for as long as it is going on. It's very frustrating. I wish her well. Uh, I don't think she understands quite how much I sympathize with her personal situation. Uh, not that that is anyone's business or in any way relevant to the situation at hand. I understand being so frustrated that I lash out at people. And I definitely did not leave this classroom in an appropriate way. I, I definitely was way out of line with how I left this classroom. Um, but given the situation, I don't regret it. I don't regret standing up for myself. regret standing up for other students because she singled more than just me out that day.
But listen, not every teacher is going to be everyone's cup of tea. I know I love you and, and Jim, but I know other people who don't like him very much, so it's all a matter of opinion. I don't want anyone to lose their job, however, that was so unacceptable. Um, top three worst educational experiences I've had. Uh, in order, chronologically, when I was, I didn't learn how to read until I was 10 years old. Um, and I would go to the, li the school library and my librarian would tell me to put books back so people who could read can have them instead of giving me a chance. Uh, it took one teacher really sitting down and working with me. And now I've written two novels and five children's books. One of my novels is in the works to be published this year. Um, the other one was when I was 12, I had an Italian teacher have me stand in front of the room and say, I am fat over and over again, which to this day is the only thing I can say in Italian is io sono grassa. And then this, which is to have my work set up and then someone tell me before we even begin, it doesn't fit the brief, how can I compare this to another student's work? And while yes, Kathy did not specifically say your work is shit, um, it's context clues, it's implied. I have an English degree. It's the same reason why I could be like, can you hand me that without specifically saying, can you hand me that whisk? Um, because it's implied. I wish she had pulled me aside and talked to me if she thought my work wasn't up to par. She had pulled me aside um, before to tell me that she didn't have one of the tests I had done for her twice at that point. So I redid it a third time because I am an honor roll student and I do what my teachers ask me to do. And she uh, then claimed that she never lost it she also told me at that point that at the, on the, what was the weekend before the 12th, so 7th or something, I can't remember the exact date. I have it written down. I have everything written down and I have photos of everything. Um, but yeah, uh, she told me that I was in academic danger for the first time the Thursday before the 12th, um, which was news to me because I thought, I didn't think I was getting an A in the class by any means, but I definitely thought I was passing. And I had produced some work that I was tremendously proud of, so I thought maybe a low B. Um, so hearing that I was getting a D was really, really shocking. And also, at that point, uh, that close to finals, there was literally no possible way I could bring the grade up. So even more jarring. Um, I do have a fail on my transcript. Uh, it was for a biology class. I did not contest that grade because I absolutely deserved to get an F in that class. It was right when I had started college and I was not very mature and um, didn't really know what I was getting into and it was before I changed majors because I thought I still wanted to be in the sciences. But um, I've never had to file a complaint against a teacher ever in my life. And I've never had to, um, never had to do a grade appeal because every grade I've gotten is a grade I've earned. And I totally understand that not every teacher is going to love me or love what I make, which is fine. Doesn't bother me at all. I'm gonna get a sponge. Sorry, as I said, not every teacher is gonna like me or like my work or um, anything like that. However, I think it's really important to acknowledge people's efforts, especially if it's something that they don't do. Um, I don't do paper making. 
I do fiber art, but I don't do paper making. Um, and I worked very hard in her class, whether she believes that or not. Sorry, I'm trying to get it to look very rugged and organic. There we go. Now I'm doing Abaca because it gets really nice and like drum tight when it dries and it will um, become almost translucent, which I think will look beautiful against the bark. Sorry, this is probably a better angle now. Hopefully I never have to show this video to anyone and I can just delete it because everything will go smoothly. However, I'm not optimistic that things will go smoothly. My dream of dreams is she gives me the lowest possible passing grade and I don't have to do a grade appeal. I don't feel like I deserve a C minus because again, I did work hard, I pushed myself. However, if that is the grade she deems I am worth, that is the grade I will accept. But in reality, I think she is going to fail me and again claim that I did not show up to classes, which is laughable. I was hospitalized for a week this semester and I'm still showing up to classes. I was told to take the semester off by a doctor and I'm still showing up to classes. It's a mixture of what are you gonna do and to fight for what you really believe in. <sighs> I think I'm gonna put some more there and along the base. I almost want it like a crescent shape when it's done. So, um, and then I'll pull paint over it. I'm thinking of going with some more um, really geometric designs because my whole concept is supposed to be man versus environment. Um, so having something really structured like a geometric design versus something really organic I think will work. However, we'll, we'll see when I get up to my room and start working on things. I don't care that she don't she doesn't like me you know she doesn't have to it's fine i really liked her which is what's even more frustrating i thought she was a good teacher until she started doing the like calling people out and calling me out specifically obviously um but calling out some of the younger students too and saying that their work wasn't good enough is really frustrating because like this isn't what we do, this isn't our, sorry, that did not come out well, and that's why you pull extra. Um, it's frustrating, because for a lot of those kids, this is their first college experience. You know, I'm, I'm in my 30s, but if you're gonna tell a 19 year old that their work is shit and that they're shit, or at least imply that, um, why would they ever feel encouraged to continue going on with school or to continue coming here it's not fair and it's not right because a lot of those students are very, very talented. I think what's also frustrating is some of the assignments, like the one she accused me of, uh, the one she accused me of cheating on. I had a different idea originally. I was trying to do watermarks of a um, sunflower seed growing up and then dying and ending in a seed again. However, my watermarks really weren't taking, they weren't doing well. Uh, it just, it, doesn't, it didn't look right. It was coming out really, really sloppy. Um, and I don't like putting out subpar work. 
so I decided to do my leaf cutouts. Um, which granted, she, she had given us examples of things she had wanted us to do, such as inclusion or watermark or things like that, but um, I just couldn't get it to look the way I wanted it to. Um, and so I decided to cut it out with an X-Acto knife, uh, which she claims, uh, at, well, at least at the time, claimed was not a paper making technique, which is kind of laughable because I think it's the best known paper technique as far as silhouettes is it. I mean, you go back to the Victorian era, you have women doing silhouettes as a form of art along with fabric dyeing and things like that. Um, so cutouts, silhouettes, things of that nature. Uh, it's a very old technique as far as paper making goes. Is there methyl cellulose? That's an excellent question. You know, I'm not seeing any, and I don't want to go moving too many things around in the fridge because I don't know what is crucial for her current class, and I definitely don't want to do anything that might disrupt other people's education. So I am going to do my best blending this by hand. Um, it also might give it a really fun texture as it dries and it stretches. Maybe those areas will look different. It might take a day or two for it to dry, but um, I intend to have it turned in by the end of this week. And an email Kathy told me to turn it in to my academic advisor, who is Bethany Giesman. Giesman? Eastman. She told me to turn it into her, um, so I shall do that. <sighs> that can't be reused because it has bits of bark in it and I am not going to taint. Sorry, I'm debating if I should do more or not. This is kind of the look I was going for, however, I'm second guessing everything I do now, wondering if it's going far enough. I'm gonna stick with it. Um, yeah, once it's been clumped up like this and once it's been dirtied, I'm just gonna throw it out. One, because it's not a lot of product and two, because I definitely don't want to um, taint or ruin anything that uh, other students who actually enjoy paper making and are good at paper making may need um, in the future. I definitely don't want to ruin anyone's experience. Sorry for taking you on such a long and rambling ride that this is, but I also, I don't know, given the situation, I thought I'd cover my ass. Okay. I'm gonna let that sit. Let's go rinse some pelons, shall we? Whoop, that didn't work. Okay, so I just wanna show again. It was dirty when I got here. I can't do anything about that, but I will clean it to the best of my ability and leave it cleaner than I found it, hopefully.
just a second. I'm gonna hold it there. And though this one, I don't think got any on it. I'm gonna clean it anyway. any of the pulp through a screen otherwise it's going to clog up the drains especially abaca it gets really hard kathy told us a story about how she dumped some abaca on her driveway and it's like been years and it's still there so uh, i don't want that to happen to the school because i like it here to harden so hold on. that's been thrown up uh, now I am going to clean the whisk because it still has some of the fiber on it and again I don't want to put anything back dirty or ruin anything because again um, it's not my studio and there are other people who enjoy this and I want them to have the best experience possible. Alright, so here you can see there's still a little fiber that I'm going to collect. Uh, I don't know how it's going to look when it's dry, but I did the best job I could. Um, I'm going to sweep that water up so it dries faster. Let's start putting stuff away, shall we? Ooh, I need to clean this too. I knew I was forgetting something. So I'll clean that in just a second. And put these back where I found them, which was right under here. Okay. Let me, yeah. I'm going to put this abaca right back where I found it. Right there. That's where I got the dyed ones from. So once I get my little to-go containers full, I will put those back. Um, yeah, all right, let's clean this mold and deckle. This one I'm not going to scrub as hard because um, I don't want the screen to fall off, but I am going to give it a bit of a scrub down just to make sure that there's no chunks of fiber on it. Because again, 
not my studio. I know how I want the pottery studio left, which is not this. Um, and that doesn't always happen. much longer video than I anticipated. I was like, oh, I'll just do clean up and put away. And then I was like, second thought, might as well cover all my bases. Okay, so that is the last, whoop, that is the last of fiber in the trash. Let's start hanging things up. So I'm gonna prop the camera up, then I'm gonna grab the pellons, which are the paper I was cooching on top of, and the felts, I'm going to hang them up Sorry, I'm gonna hang them. I was gonna do back here, but it looks like there's other people's work and I don't wanna disrupt anyone's fiber dyeing. So I'm gonna hang them right up here in the front. So let me go grab those, I'll be right back. Again, the reason I'm not putting these back directly where I found them is because they were in a closed rubber bank bin and I don't want anything getting moldy or mildewy. I don't know about other people. I'm not a huge fan of mold and mildew. I like being able to breathe, which is funny since my major is ceramics and it's the dustiest thing on the planet. So again, they're hanging up, they're drip drying. That's how we did it at the end of last, or we did it all last semester. Hopefully that's fine. Let's clean up the rest of this. Okay, so this again, I, because it has fiber in it, which you, you can kind of see it's milky. Uh, what I need to do is get one of those buckets and um, a colander over there in a fine mesh net. That way I can collect all the fiber, put it back in the container where I got it from, and that way I'm not wasting anything and also not dumping it down the drain. So let's do that. Sorry, hit a button. Let's do that. bucket. Fine mesh net goes in the colander. Goes over. Don't know if you can see any of that, but it's really just for the principle of the thing. 
And now I'm going to slowly pour it all in. Because I don't want it to overflow. And because again, it's over being avocado, it will take a long time to drain. I'm gonna give this bucket a rinse. I can't squeeze this because again, it will compact that um, fiber and it won't be usable and I want people to be able to use it. So it's another waiting game. Got nothing, sorry, just. It's gonna be a while, as long as that's doing its thing why don't we put this back and then wipe down the table avoiding my drippy things putting it back Is that? Roll to dough containers. These are cups I used last semester for a different pulp painting thing, and then just for some reason kept, so I brought them back because well, why not? You can see this one still has some like black at the bottom of it. I'm going to try and avoid taking all of this stuff if I can because again there are other people who will want to take this class and use this product. Oop, that's a little much. There we go. And then putting it back in the fridge where I found it. Same with this one, giving it a mix. Is this a better angle for you guys? Don't know who, if anyone is watching this, but. There we go. Putting it back. And finally, a light green. I think that should be plenty for what I'm doing. Cool. And then I'm taking the abaca bucket back out because obviously I forgot I needed to empty stuff in there. Three little cups on my project right over there. That's going to be fun carrying across the street. This is still draining. So I'm going to sweep the floor. You just, yeah, I'll show you. This is just the water from Kuching, so I'm gonna sweep it around so it dries out faster. That's all I'm doing. Again. I'm 
just seeing if I can adjust it slightly so it will drain faster. Can you guys even see? Can you see what I'm doing? I hope so. I'm just holding it so it will drain a little bit easier, in theory. So I can't, beginning of the video was 7.05, it's 7.45 now, 40 minutes, and then I'm gonna go back to my room and work on it more there. So I literally never have to think about it again. Hopefully I get that notebook back with, um, or the binder back with the, my examples of work I've done and my, specifically there's an embossed piece of black paper that I used a luster dust on that I quite like, that I would very much like back. We'll see. If I don't get it back, I'm sure there's a workshop somewhere where I could take another paper making class and do it again. But I sure as hell will never do it here again. Not in any lifetime. Still, still pretty wet. But again, overbeaten abaca takes a very, very long time to drain. So after I'm done putting this back, then I will take this stuff over to the sink again, uh, the screened in sink again, to scrub down and clean and put things back where I found them. Again, just for the ease of literally everyone else who uses this room. This is enough. I have so much work to do. Good God. Still going. Almost done. And again, you, you never want to clump it up or anything like that because you don't want to, um, you don't want to compress it because once it's compressed it will never get back to its real uh, nice and luxurious and usable fiber state. Oh, I'm trying to be so careful to not compress this stuff. Here we go. Just be real gentle trying to save all the fiber I can so other people can use it. You're probably looking in the wrong place now. There you go. Camera change. If it falls off, that's how it's meant to be. I'm not compressing anything. I'm just gently, gently tapping it in. very hard to pick things up without being able to, you know, grip it. But I'm doing my best. That's all I can do. Hmm. God damn, I hope I never have to do anything like this again. Good news is that all my other teachers seem to love me. Not that I need them to love me. But it is makes for a better more encouraging environment when they see that I work hard and acknowledge that rather than not doing it exactly their way or claiming I didn't make an effort at all because I didn't do it the way they liked it. Again, I'm trying to do my best here not to waste anything or to waste as little as possible because people are gonna use it. Or that's the hope anyway. Okay. So I'm gonna sponge that up because I don't think I can pick it up without 
ruining it. I'm going to wash that again and dump out the bucket. There we go. Nice and sealed and back in the fridge. Exactly where I found it. Okay. Let's do this again. Uh, because this one has so much fiber, I'm gonna just stick in this corner. Turn it off there just in case. Okay. Turning you around again. As you can see, I cleaned it to the best of my ability. Making sure there are no big chunks around. Most of it's right here. Pushing on it throughout again. A lot of back and forth. Okay, now I'm gonna sponge down the table dump this water, clean everything out, and then we are good to go. Same sponge. I'm leaving those sinks exactly as I found them. All right. There's a bunch of fiber here, so I'm just gonna flick it right into the trash so there's no confusion and so I don't have to scrub down that sink again. It's not a glamorous job, but neither is being an artist. But hey, after this I'll have a degree and I'll never have to work in retail again. Just kidding, I'm getting an art degree. Of course I'm gonna be working in retail again. $40,000 for a piece of paper. Ain't that a joke? Cool. Alright, so that's clean. That's clean. Other than that one little bit. Putting this back where I found it. Throwing that bit out. Let's rinse and dump these. I just want to point out, I am not setting the bucket on the screen. I'm balancing it because I don't want to damage the screen. Just very, very fine bits of um, fiber got through. So, just kidding. I do have to clean the sink again. But first, let's put this back.
Okie dokie. We table is clean. That stuff was out. That stuff is mine to take home. Putting on my jacket and then turning off the lights and leaving this room exactly the way I found it other than those two pelons and those two felts hanging up. I will show myself turning off the lights and doing everything else. I meant to take a video of me opening the locker and opening the door and showing things exactly the way they were. However, I just wanted to get this over with and I'm really hoping I don't have to show this video to anyone. So let's put on our jacket and go. Cool fiber all over my shirt. Certainly didn't miss that. I actually have a couple of shirts I had to throw out because they still have fiber on them, even after being washed a lot. And I think that was the Abaca I was mentioning. Okie dokie. I hope I never see this room again. All right. Picking up my head. As gently as I can. I'm gonna make sure there are no crumbs or anything. Picking up my little containers. Turning off the lights. Boom. And closing the door, leaving the room exactly the way that I found it. Here's to hoping I never, ever have to come back to that room again. Sorry, one last thing. Literally just finished walking across the street with all my stuff. And I noticed that some of the tannins are already starting to leach into the paper from the wood. I'm actually really excited about that and to see how that interacts with the design. Anyway, um, hopefully this is it. If it's dry enough tomorrow, I'll turn it in tomorrow. Tomorrow is my very long day. Um, I don't get out of classes until about 8.40 at night. So, God, I hope nobody ever has to watch these videos. I just wanted to prove that I left the room as clean as I found it and possibly even cleaner than I found it. So, yeah, all right, okay. I'm still working. I'm gonna do some outlines in black. It is currently, sorry, I was watching arcade videos. It's currently 8.30 at night. Um, Again, hoping to have this done today. Need to do a few reinforcements with hot glue. Um, this you might find cool. Sorry, I've been up since like six in the morning, but I have some flower seeds. They're all native to the area, but I was thinking of putting some of those in the nooks and crannies of my um, my piece. So when, because it's site, site specific, when I eventually do uh, put it where I want to, uh, it will grow native wild flowers. So I'll take photos of the end. Uh, I'm gonna send, sorry, <sighs> I'm gonna send an email later tonight um, saying that it's done and I have, I'm hoping to, sorry, I'm dropping everything, that I'm hoping to drop it off either tomorrow morning or at the very latest uh, Tuesday morning or, uh, sorry, Wednesday morning. So, uh, yeah. Proving that I'm doing my work. Proving that I actually cleaned up the studio after myself. Yeah, I guess that's all I can do. The rest of it is out of my Final hair. video. Uh, I outlined the leaf shapes to make them a little more recognizable. And I also added a few little dots just to break it up some more. I am going to just reinforce the underside a bit, and then, um, yeah, it should be done. Hopefully forever. <laughs>